Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Andy Ruiz Jr. survived a few hairy moments in his fight with Chris Ariola, which was on pay-per-view, getting a wide decision in the end, despite having to get off the deck in round two. And ultimately, while there were a few shots that he took and he was rocked a few times, relatively comfortable enough. And you wouldn't know that sort of listening to the commentary, which sort of tried to reinvent how the fight played out after the fact. But this was a case where Ariola started really strong. He boxed to a good game plan and it took Andy Ruiz Jr. some rounds to really sort of figure it out. But it helped that the 40-year-old Chris Ariola was unable to really keep up the same sort of pace and movement which he was able to show in those early rounds. He was trying the tactic that Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker used so effectively against Andy Ruiz Jr., box and move. Remembering Andy Ruiz Jr. is a front foot counterpuncher, so he likes to work off what you give him. So he likes you coming to him and he will look to counter you. But in those early rounds, Ariola wasn't giving him that. And when Ruiz doesn't have that, he had to go looking for the action. And he found a little bit of trouble because he walked into a big right hand from Ariola in round two. And it sort of dropped him to the deck. The knee hit the canvas and he was given a count. So he wasn't necessarily terribly hurt. But it was a punch that it certainly did get his attention and clearly scored a knockdown, a 10-8 round for Ariola. And I actually gave Ariola the third round because there were some wild scenes early in that round exchanges and Ariola rocked Andy Ruiz Jr. a few times a beautiful left hook backs him up and Ruiz uh, barely keeps his footing he was uh, backed up and hurt by that and a couple of other moments where he was rocked but it was from about round four where Andy Ruiz Jr. started to actually get into his groove find a bit of a rhythm and he did in those early rounds kind of look like a guy who'd been out of the ring for almost 18 months because he had been out of the ring almost that long it was a pretty scratchy effort early on. He really couldn't sort of establish a good distance. His timing was off, but he started to work together a few combinations and to a game plan. And what was good from Andy Ruiz Jr. from round four, four onwards was he was uh, actively working to the body, right hands to the body, but also jabbing to the body too. And he was bringing it up top. And Ariola from about round five onwards really started to slow down and this wasn't necessarily called by the um the commentary but as soon as Ariola started to slow down and was unable to you know keep up that movement he became a much more hittable target and it became i guess from what rounds sort of five or six on to about 10 or 11 just a procession round after round where Andy Ruiz Jr. was doing enough to win the round, but not necessarily looking spectacular. There were sort of flashes of his hand speed and combinations that he likes to throw, but it wasn't really anything too fancy or special. He was just going about his business. It was a very workmanlike performance. And while some people are going to criticize him for not stopping Chris Ariola, I actually said ahead of this fight in my um, preview and prediction video, because of the shape that Ariola was coming in, I thought maybe this could go quite deep or in fact go towards the decision that had been warming up to that sort of possibility. And it ended up going there. But uh, by the sort of 12th round, diminishing returns from Chris Ariola, who basically wasn't really doing too much and wasn't having success and from round eight onwards there seemed to be some sort of shoulder issue he got hit in the sort of shoulder blade wing type area and shaking that and that was a number of times in the remaining rounds but the success that he had earlier in the fight when he was trying to come forward wasn't having it so if only he was able to sort of keep up that earlier sort of pattern he could have maybe racked up some more rounds and made this a bit more interesting and it wasn't the sort of fight we expected. A lot of people um, thought this was going to be a barn burner, that Areola was going to do what Areola has done for a lot of his career, come forward and basically let his hands go. And we would have some sort of um, shootout until, you know, whoever was left standing was left standing. No, he came prepared. He was at a career low weight, 228 pounds. He was very disciplined in those early rounds, and that's why he was able to have some success, able to walk Ruiz onto some shots. But, you know, as soon as the opportunities came back, because when he was, um, you know, on the move and making Ruiz come to him, Ruiz had no opportunities to work from. He had a good range and a good dis distance, but was unable to maintain it. 
so ultimately and this is the thing because you heard joe goosen at one point it might have been about round six or round seven say you know our game plan is now to um to come forward and you know put it on him sort of thing close the distance and i th- sort of thought that's the only sort of fight that andy ruiz jr can win that he really will relish the opportunity for a guy to come forward you know let his hands go he'll make him miss make him pay and largely that's what we saw it was a much more comfortable pace and a, a range from Ruiz to work from. And he got the best of the action. So, yeah, after the fight, there seemed to be, because Ariola was very annoyed that he, because he thought he won more than two or three rounds. But for me, it would have been three rounds max. And when you look at the scorecards, and maybe he didn't do the math, uh, two of the judges gave him one round, the other two rounds. I didn't think he really did too much more than that. And, um, Yeah, I mean, being 40 years old and just unable to keep up the pace and being outworked, outlanded, and those were clear in the punch stance too. I'm not sure what he was expecting the result to be, but it sort of seemed to be Ruiz was open to uh, to a rematch, saying that, you know, we can run it back. And although he got the win here and it was an okay fight, it wasn't anything special, I don't want to see that again, especially not if if, if I have to pay for it. Um, Ruiz looked rusty and, you know, he said he needed a tune-up. This was the tune-up. I expect to see Andy Ruiz Jr. in with someone much better, a much more meaningful fight. I don't want to see him having some sort of rematch with 40-year-old Chris Ariola, who was game in this fight, but ultimately was unable to do much past the early rounds. It became all Ruiz after a certain point. But um, yeah, Ariola very upset, and I can't repeat some of what he said, but he did say he didn't think that the shoulder was um, injured, and he said, yeah, let's run it back. Let's have this rematch. Can't say I have any interest in seeing a rematch. How about you? But overall, I mean, Ruiz didn't look great. I mean, he looked okay. He looked like a guy who was rusty. And hopefully we do see him back soon because we don't want to see him out for another, you know, six to nine months or a year or whatever. He needs to be a guy who's in the ring, busy and uh, in meaningful fights. This fight, he sure got a little bit of a scare early on, but he overcame it. He showed his pedigree and comfortably boxed to a decision. Let's see Luis Ortiz or the winner of uh, Kovnatsky, Hellenius, something like that. Or Charles Martin. I don't want to see Ariola again. It's time to um, to move past that. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.